You know, it wasn't so long ago that I was stood in exactly the same spot reviewing a new range of caravans for Bailey. And today, well, it's the same old story. This time, however, it's the turn of Pegasus. The GT70 has given way to the Pegasus Grand and it's been reimagined as an eight foot wide caravan with four or six berth options. It's available on single or twin axle configurations. There are six models to choose from. We've got four of them here today. So let's have a quick look around the outside and let's have a look at the all important interior details. Right, let's have a look around this, the Pegasus Grande Bologna. Now I'll go through the interior in a minute, but I'll just go quickly around the outside to show you what is different. So right at the beginning, we've got a barbecue output there. We've got a little locker, electric hookup input, and we've also got a mains outlet here as well. And that's a good place to put the motor move isolation key as well. I must admit, I don't like the electric hookup on this side of the caravan. So the door is a stable style split door there. And this one has got the window in the top, unlike the Phoenix. Uh, big fridge vents there, gives you an indication of what's coming inside. And on this particular one, we've got a hatch at the back there. So like I said, this is the Bologna. Now another thing to mention about this caravan is that this one is a prototype. It's one of the very first runs here, so there might be some subtle differences. And in fact, there are people working on some of the details of this caravan as I'm filming. Right at the back here, we've got a toilet outlet. Now on this caravan, we've got the gas locker on this side. Some other layouts, which I'll show you later on, have got the gas locker on the other side. We've got outlet there for the Truma heating water inlet and then we've got another access to another hatch here if i could open up this hatch you would see that you can go from this side of the van all the way through to the other side to that other little hatch on the other side so let me bring you back around here and i'll show you what i mean That gives you access right across the width of the caravan. So there's eight foot wide storage there. So that's perfect for skis, fishing rods, flagpoles, anything that's long and bulky can go across the front of the van. Doesn't look eight foot wide, does it? Usual story with the windows. It's the same windows across the Unicorn and the Phoenix side windows as well. Some graphics at the top there to break it all up because I think that would look quite white, wouldn't it? ATC is fitted as standard on these. It's not on this one because, like I said, it's a prototype. So that's what we're looking like around the outside. Let's head on inside and have a look at this layout. Now new for the Pegasus Grande is the lounge configuration in some of the models. And this one is one of those models. The lounge has got a G configuration. So gone are the central drawers at the front and instead we've got a wraparound sofa. Now the kitchen is fairly standard now. It's the same sort of configuration that we have in the Unicorn and the Phoenix. So we've got a cover on the top. We've got drawers and cupboards in front of the sink. We do have, however, a different style of tap that goes into the sink. And the cooker itself is a dual fuel, separate hob, separate oven configuration. Now the front overhead lockers, they're big and uh, airy. They're same sort of size as those on the Phoenix. They're not positive catched and they're not soft closing like you would find on the Unicorn. The colour scheme, by the way, well, the wood is the eucalyptus, which we've seen before. And like in the Phoenix, the accent colour is the brushed champagne, separated by a nice silver strip in between them. Like all the other Baileys in the Bailey family now, that big central window is absolutely massive, lets lots of light in, and you can see already how big and how welcoming this space actually is. So if we now move back away from the kitchen into the sleeping area, this Bologna has a transverse fixed bed. In the moment, it's in its daytime configuration, so it's pushed back against the wall. In its nighttime configuration, it pulls out, but still gives plenty of space for us to walk around the bed if somebody needs to make way for the bathroom. Now let's talk about the bathroom for a moment. We've got a Thetford loo on the off side. We've got a small basin, large mirror that goes across the entire back of the bathroom. And the shower is the standard Bailey fully lined granite effect shower. So that's the Bologna. Not a bad lookout. I quite like it. Um, let's go and have a look around the Turin. Right, here we are inside the Turin. A little bit more conventional than the last one. Let's just start from front to back and I'll show you through some of the features. At the front here, we've got two separate settees either side. This makes up into a large double bed. We've got a side dinette, which makes up into a double bed, but it's also big enough to contain the entire family for lunch, dinner, breakfast, etc. 
Opposite the side dinette, we've got a large, tall fridge freezer. Above that, we've got the microwave, and then we've got the usual configuration of the kitchen. A covered dual fuel hob, separate grill and oven, square sink, draining board, and large cupboards beneath it. Now, right at the back, we've got ourselves a French bed tucked away in the corner. Don't worry too much if you're uh, worried about that kink in the corner there. I've had a go on it, and it's not too bad. It could be problematic for very tall people, but generally that just means you've got to cuddle up each other where in the middle of the night. Now next to the bed at the back, we've got the washroom tucked away into the corner. Right at the back, it's the fully lined shower, small wash basin, and then the Thetford loo. And then if we leave the bathroom, we can then come back down the caravan and we've got a large central wardrobe for the entire family. So there we go, so that's the Turin. So this is a six berth layout. We've had a look at a four berth layout. Should we have a look at a couple more? Now, if by magic, here we are sat in the Brindisi. Now, the Brindisi is a four berth caravan. It's a single axle configuration. It's the only single axle I'm looking at today, but nonetheless, it's still eight foot wide and it feels huge. So like its bigger brother, the Bologna, this caravan has a sweeping front lounge. Uh, it's the G configuration where you've got this wraparound sofa and then one little odd one on the side there. It's great because you've got a little table all to the side. And this particular caravan, which I'm sat in at the moment, has the standard fabric. So it's this sort of colour scheme, which I'll be honest with you, I quite like. Uh, if I, to be honest with you, I prefer this one to the upgraded fabric option. I think this looks very nice indeed. So what's to say about this caravan? Well, the configuration of the kitchen is exactly the same in all the others. This time the kitchen is situated on the right-hand side of the caravan, which means the gas bottles also are on that right-hand side. So opposite the kitchen is a triple fuel, 103 litre Dometic fridge freezer. Above that is the microwave, pretty standard affair to be honest with you. Uh, above the fridge, however, there's a nice little worktop where you can stick a TV and there is TV points there as well. In fact, the TV placement right there means that everybody who sat at the front here has got a good viewing angle of the TV. So it's quite nicely proportioned. Now beyond the kitchen is the fixed transverse bed. It's in its daytime configuration at the moment, which means you've got quite a clear walkway to the washroom at the end. But in its nighttime configuration, the bed simply pulls out, but you've still got plenty of room to walk past it when the bed is pulled out. The washroom at the back, well, it's a standard affair again. That granite stone effect fully lined shower is in the corner, a small wash basin, and then the toilet is to the offside of the caravan. So, okay, so that is the Brindisi. Quite a nice caravan, nice and big and spacious. I can see this one being quite a good seller, to be honest. Right, I'm in the last caravan I'm going to be looking at today. I'm in the Palermo, which is a six berth twin axle caravan. Now this one is almost identical to the Turin we had a look at earlier on, with one subtle difference. This one, instead of having a fixed bed at the back, we've got two bunk beds there as well. Now you may notice there's something going on at the back of this caravan, which I've never seen in a Bailey before. Can you guess what it is yet? Well, the answer is we've got a fogged window at the back of the caravan here. I've never seen that before. Maybe that's gonna be a new feature. Maybe it's just something on this prototype, I don't know, but that certainly is a welcome view for me. So just like the Turin, we have a very simple configuration here. We've got two seats at the front there that makes up to be a respectable double bed. We've got a side dinette where I'm sat at the moment, which again makes up into a respectable bed as well. On the left hand side of the caravan, we've got the kitchen, a tall fridge freezer and a microwave. In the corner, it's the bathroom, the same as the Turin. The only difference here is that we've got bunk beds. Now, looking at the bunk beds a little bit closer, you can see that we have two bunk beds and they've both got reading lights. On this particular caravan, they've both got USB sockets on them. But if we look down next to the bed at the bottom there, you can see that we've got a power outlet at the bottom there. And right next to it, we've got a little bin which can be used to store toys or shoes or anything like that. And that just pours out as a bin from underneath that seat. The table, of course, can be collapsed down flat to the side of the wall. I will say, though, it would have been nice to have seen a TV coaxial outlet at the back here so that the little ones can then plug into the TV and watch something out of the way. So is there anything in this caravan which I don't like? Well, there's a couple of niggling little things, to be fair. I think the washrooms are nice and big, but the sinks are just a bit too small. I think they could do with being slightly bigger, certainly for the six berth caravans. 
Another thing I've noticed on this particular caravan and also on the Turin earlier on today was where I would expect to put a TV point, there's a mains outlet, there's a switch and there's a blanking plate. There's no option there for a 12 volt outlet or a coax TV point. There is however a coaxial TV point on the front chest which is great in theory except that's going to block your view and it's the only place that you can plug a TV into in this caravan. Small detail I know but that's something that would irritate me no end. Talking about the chest I do like the way that it's just cut in underneath just like the Phoenix there's no silly little cubby hole underneath the, uh, the chest which is just a waste of space anyway. No instead there's a place to put some shoes and you've got some heating outlet there as well. So all in all quite tidy. So there we go guys that's my review now complete i hope you've enjoyed it and i hope it's given you a little bit of a taster of what's coming out if you do want more technical information if you want to find out more details about it head on over to the bailey website there's no point in me doing any of that because they've got all of the bases covered if you want to see these caravans these very caravans well they will be at the nec in october and they'll be on the forecourts up and down the country towards the end of the year so that's it from me today guys thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care now. Bye-bye.